you don't have to look good for people you don't have to be perfect just because other people want you to to be perfect if your soul is perfect from within that's all right this is all what you want this is all what you need to be our society has made very weird very weird kind of norms to look perfect and great for men it's different for women it's different we think too much about what people say we th- we listen to ourselves too little do you know what makes you perfect when you make someone smile you know what makes you perfect when you try to do something good for the people around you do you know what makes you perfect when you feel someone's pain and how beautiful pain is that it connects you with people no other medium can connect you with others but pain that's why i always say that i'm in pain and that's the blessing in disguise for me if you think that your life is hard and you're giving up on that because you think your life is unfair think again because when you think that way you are being unfair to your own self when you share your story and it doesn't make you cry that means you have healed the real happiness doesn't lie in success money fame it lies within real happiness lies in gratitude i believe in the power of words many people speak before they think but i know the value of words the words can make you break you they can heal your soul they can damage you forever so i always try to use the positive words in my life wherever i go they call it adversity i call it opportunity they call it weakness i call it strength they call me disabled i call myself differently able they see my disability i see my ability there are some incidents that happen in your life and those incidents are so strong that they change your dna those incidents or accidents are so strong that they break you physically they deform your body but they transform your soul those incidents break you deform you but they mold you into the best version of you made people realize that sometimes problems are not too big we are too small because we cannot handle them we always expect ease from life we have this amazing fantasy about life this is how things should work this is my plan it should go as per my plan if that doesn't happen we give up so my dear friends let me tell you one thing i never wanted to be on the wheelchair never thought of being on the wheelchair i was always aspiring to do bigger things but had no idea that for that i have to pay the price to be where i am today it's a very heavy price this life is a test and a trial and tests are trials are never supposed to be easy so when you are expecting ease from life and life gives you lemons then you make the lemonade and then do not blame life for that because you were expecting ease from a trial trials make you a stronger better person it is okay to be scared it is okay to cry everything is okay but giving up should not be an option they always say that failure is not an option failure should be an option because when you fail you get up and then you fail and then you get up and that keeps you going that's how humans are strong failure is an option should be an option but giving up is not never we have this thing in minds we call it perfection we want everything perfect we want ourselves to be perfect there is this image in our head about everything perfect life perfect relationships perfect career perfect amount of money that we need to earn no matter what nothing is perfect in this world we all are perfectly imperfect and that is perfectly all right that's all right we were sent here not to become the perfect people those people who tell you how to look perfect even those people are imperfect trying to fight this fear of looking imperfect in all those imperfections you have to listen to your heart we are all in pursuit of something in life some people chase fame some people long to have more and more money 
Some people wish to live a life with endless joy. And some people crave to have peace and contentment in their heart. But somehow or the other, we are all in pursuit of something. And in this pursuit, we tend to forget to celebrate what we have in this very moment. This beautiful gift of life. I receive so many messages, so much love from all of you and so many prayers. I also hear people saying that we want Munibha to walk again. We wish and pray that you walk someday, you stand with your family and friends. And when I look at them, I say, Amen. But deep inside, I ask myself, is this something that I truly wish for? To be honest, no. Because I have accepted myself the way I am. I have made peace with the reality that this wheelchair is my reality. It's the part of my body now and I'm totally fine with it. You must have heard a word or maybe you must have read it somewhere. Disability or a person with disability. Being a wheelchair user myself, I don't believe in the word disability or a disabled person. And I'll tell you why. Every time I read this word somewhere, or if I hear it, I cringe a bit. Because every time, if we put the word this with someone's ability, we are knowingly or unknowingly questioning their abilities. You see, we live in a world which tends to celebrate sameness. And let's be honest, this world is still trying to figure out how to accept people who are unique people who are differently able. So when we diss someone's abilities, it doesn't seem right. It doesn't sound polite. It doesn't sound respectful. So this word disability or a person with disability does not exist in my dictionary. Let's delete it from our dictionaries. Let's change the narrative. Now is the time. Every step that I take in my wheelchair and every word that I will say it's going to pave a path for those who want to do something in life. People who have the courage and resilience to face the adversity. And also, it's going to pave the path for those who are ambitious. Life is a trial. Every time you realize that. I was 18 years old when I got married. And this thing I'm sharing for the very first time on an international level. I was 18 years old when I got married. I belong to a very conservative family, a Baloch family, where good daughters never say no to their parents. My father wanted me to get married, and all I said was, if that makes you happy, I'll say yes. And of course, it was never a happy marriage. Just about after two years of getting married, about nine years ago, I met a car accident. Somehow my husband fell asleep and the car fell in the ditch. He managed to jump out, saved himself. I'm happy for him. But I stayed inside the car and I sustained a lot of injuries. The list is a bit long. Don't get scared. I'm perfectly fine now. Radius ulna of my right arm were fractured. The wrist was fractured. Shoulder bone and collarbone were fractured. My whole rib cage got fractured. And because of the rib cage injury, lungs and liver were badly injured. I couldn't breathe. I lost urinal bowel control. That's why I have to wear the bag wherever I go. But that injury that changed me and my life completely as a person and my perception towards living my life was the spine injury. Three vertebrae of my backbone were completely crushed and I got paralyzed for the rest of my life. One day doctor came to me and he said, well, I heard that you wanted to be an artist, but you ended up being a housewife. I have a bad news for you. You won't be able to paint again because your wrist and your arm are so deformed. You won't be able to hold a pen again. And I stayed quiet. Next day doctor came to me and said, your spine injury is so bad, you won't be able to walk again. A 
I took a deep breath and I said it's all right. The vet stay doctor came to me and said because of your spine injury and the fixation that you have in your back you won't be able to give birth to a child again. That day I was devastated. I still remember I asked my mother why me? And that is where I started to question my existence. Why am I even alive? What's the point of living? I cannot walk, I cannot paint. Fine. I cannot be a mother. And we have this thing in our heads being women that we are incomplete without having children. I am going to be an incomplete woman for the rest of my life. What's the point? People are scared. They think I will get divorced. What is going to happen to me? Why me? Why am I alive? We all try to chase this tunnel. We all do this because we see light in the end of the tunnel which keeps us going. My dear friends, in my situation there was a tunnel that I had to roll on. But there was no light. And that is where I realized that the words have the power to heal the soul. My mother said to me, this too shall pass. God has a greater plan for you. I don't know what it is, but he surely has. I was discharged and I went back home. And I went back home and I realized that I have developed a lot of pressure ulcers on my back and on my hip bone. I was unable to sit. There were a lot of infections in my body, a lot of allergies. The doctors wanted me to lie down on the bed straight for not six months, for not one year, for two years, I was bedridden, confined in that one room, looking outside the window, listening to the birds chirping and thinking maybe there will be a time when we'll be going out with the family and enjoying the nature. That was the time where I realized how lucky people are, but they don't realize. There are always turning points in your life. There was a rebirth day that I celebrated. After two years and two and a half months, when I was able to sit on a wheelchair, that was the day when I had the rebirth. I was a completely different person. I still remember the day I sat on the wheelchair for the first time, knowing that I'm never going to leave this, knowing that I won't be able to walk for the rest of my life. I saw myself in the mirror and I talked to myself. And I still remember what I said. I cannot wait for a miracle to come and make me walk. I cannot sit in the corner of the room crying, cribbing and begging for mercy because nobody has time. So I have to accept myself the way I am. The sooner the better. And that day I decided that I'm going to live life for myself. I am not going to be that perfect person for someone. I am just going to take this moment and I will make it perfect for myself. And you know how it all began? That day I decided that I'm going to fight my fears. We all have fears. Fear of unknown, fear of known, fear of losing people, fear of losing health, money, we want to excel in career. We want to become famous. We want to get money. We are scared all the time. So I wrote down one by one all those fears. And I decided that I'm going to overcome these fears one at a time. You know, when you end up being on the wheelchair, what's the most painful thing? That's another fear that people on the wheelchair, the people who are differently able, have in their hearts, but they never share. I'll share that with you. The lack of acceptance. People think, that they will not be accepted by the people because we in the world of perfect people are imperfect. You all are thriving in your careers. You have bigger dreams and aspirations in life. Always remember one thing. On the road to success, there is always we, not me. Do not think that you alone can achieve things. No. There is always another person who is standing behind you, maybe not coming on the forefront, but behind you praying for you and supporting you, never lose that person. Never. But when you think your glass is half empty, come on, your glass is half full. It's all in here and here.
There are so many people in the world who are dreaming to live a life that you are living right now. You have no idea. Embrace each and every breath that you are taking. Celebrate your life. Live it. Don't die before your death. We all die. We live this one routine of a day for 75 years and we call it life. No, that's not life. If you're still thinking why you have been sent here, if you're still juggling with the concept of why you were here, you haven't lived yet. You work hard, you make money, you do it for yourself. That's not life. You go out, you seek for people who need your help, you make their lives better. You become that sponge which can absorb all the negativity and you become that person who can emit beautiful positive vibes. And when you realize that you have changed someone's life and because of you, this person didn't give up. That is the day when you live. Always. We were talking about gratitude. Why I smile all the time. I cry all night when nobody sees me because I'm a human and I have to keep the balance. And I smile all day because I know that if I will smile, I can make people smile. That keeps me going. Be grateful for what you have. And you will always, always end up having more. But if you'll cry and if you'll crib for the little things that you don't have or the things that you have lost, you will never ever have enough. Sometimes we are too busy thinking about the things that we don't have that we forget to cherish the blessings that we have. I'm not saying that I'm not healthy and that makes me unlucky. But yes, it is hard. It is hard when I say that I cannot walk. It is hard to say when I wear this bag. It hurts. But I have to keep going because never giving up is the way to live. Always. Live your life fully. Accept yourself the way you are. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to yourself. I'll repeat, be kind to yourself. And only then you can be kind to others. Love yourself and spread that love. Life will be hard. There will be turmoils. There will be trials. But that will only make you stronger. Never give up. The real happiness doesn't lie in money or success or fame. I have this all, I never wanted this. Real happiness lies in gratitude. So be grateful, be alive and live every moment. Today, just because I'm in pain and I'm on the wheelchair, I work for children. Being the head of CSR for a company, we conduct medical camps in far-flung areas of Pakistan where so many kids die because they don't have medical facilities. And I personally believe just because they cannot afford to live doesn't mean we let them die. So we give them money, we give them medical treatment, we try to heal their wounds, physical and emotional. And I also work for the beautiful people, we call them third gender, the transgender community of Pakistan. You know what connects me with them? All my imperfections. When I go and I hug them, they never judge me. And this very good friend of mine, her name is Bijli. She calls herself electricity. And I said, are you electricity? She says, no, I'm lightning. I'm as strong as lightning. Because we have very bad power outage, so she doesn't want me to call her electricity. So she says, I am very strong. I'm thunder, I'm lightning. She came to me and the first time I hugged her, she said, you are just like me. And I said, yes, I am like you. Because to people, we are so imperfect. So how beautiful these imperfections are that because of these imperfections you can connect with people. Then why are we all running after being perfect? What's the point? Every time I go in public, I always smile. It's always a big toothy smile on my face and people ask me, don't you get tired of smiling all the time? What's the secret? I always say one thing, that I have stopped worrying about the things that I have lost, the people that I have lost. Things and people who were meant to be with me are with me. And sometimes somebody's absence makes you a better person. Cherish their absence. It's always, it's always a blessing in disguise. I always say that people are so lucky they don't even realize. You must be thinking, okay, you're lucky in what sense? Well, 
the breath that you just took was a blessing. Embrace it. Don't invest yourself in the wrong people. Because when you invest yourself in the wrong people, they break you into pieces, they torn you apart in such a way that it takes years and years to get back together. And also I'll tell her that while you're busy making amazing plans in your life, my dear, prepare yourself for worse. Because life is so unpredictable. Just be prepared. We all tend to invest ourselves in relationships. And as I said, if you are doing something right with the wrong person, nothing good will turn out. And deep inside, we women are quite intuitive. We know that it's not going anywhere. It's okay to be on your own. You're stronger than you think. Don't worry about that. And wait for the right person. Let the right person come to you. There's no rush. Are you in a good relationship with yourself? Do you love your own company? If you're miserable alone, I'm sorry. Your partner will be miserable with you. So we need to understand that we need to love our own company. Only then people will love to enjoy our company too. And don't rush. Wait for the right person. Because if it's meant to be, it will be. Who is on social media? Who's using Facebook? Everyone. Have you ever put your relationship status complicated? My relationship with myself before I was here was so complicated. It was all about people. It was never about me. There was no me anywhere. You see, people's pleaser. The person who just wants to make everyone happy knowing that it's not worth it. You just keep doing it, keep doing it. And yes, your relationship eventually with yourself becomes complicated. And then now, I don't know where there are people around me or not, but I'm me now. I'm more me now. Time is a beautiful teacher. It filters out the extras from your life, including people. Being in the wheelchair in 12 years, I've met three categories of people. Number one category is of the people who see you in the misery, in pain, and they back off. They're like, we are gone, we can't handle. I respect them for their honesty. Then there is another category of the people who are not there with you, but they just want to cling on with you all the time. They're so weak that they try to stay in your shadow. Liberate yourself from those people because they are toxic for you. Don't let them cling on to you because they're not there to help you. Liberate them. Liberate yourself. And then there is third category. These beautiful people who are so selfless that when they see you in pain, they stand next to you. They've got your back. They don't share the limelight. They are just there for you. These are your people. Value them. So yes, there are three categories of people. Try to surround yourself with those who are real and you will feel real. I pity those who see their failure in your success. You know, these critics, they were once dreamers. They just wanted to achieve something that today you have. But they gave up and they started becoming jealous of you. Pray for them because they're in a lot of pain. I've never claimed to be strong all the time. I'm one of those few people who have always acknowledged vulnerability. Because when we are vulnerable, we are humans. There are days when I don't feel like getting up in the morning. There are days when I don't feel like sitting in the wheelchair and face the world. But then what I do is like I make sure that I don't sulk in that negativity. You see, we are humans. And there are days when we fall, when we, when we break when we fail and then there are days when we rise when we heal ourselves and then we try again and again and again and we try not to give up and all this journey all that process of falling and getting back up defines our journey and defines who we are i want to be remembered as an empath somebody who just didn't say that i feel your pain but i want people to see that when i say this I mean it. And as far as my life story is concerned, I don't know how my story will end. Maybe it will never end. 
but yes, nowhere in my text the world will ever read I gave up. Have you watched Tangled? Tangled, Rapunzel, her journey, how she comes out of confinement for the first time. She goes out and see the world awaits her. You know what that song, I see the light. It reminds me of the times when I was bedridden. I used to hear the kids playing outside. I couldn't see. I used to hear thunderclap. I couldn't see the storms. I used to hear rain falling on the ground. I couldn't see it and I missed it. But when I sat in the wheelchair, I stepped out, went close to the nature, everything changed. Whatever I've been through, whatever I've experienced, all the mistakes that I've made, all the adventures that I've experienced in my life have shaped me into this person that I am today. And I'm so blessed and I'm, I feel really, really honored to have lived that life, a life full of trials, turmoils, pain, betrayals, success, failure, and it has shaped me probably into the best version of me. So it's a blessing and I wouldn't want to change even a single thing about my life. I think it's not about dealing with the negative comments. It's about dealing with negativity in general. And the best way to deal with negativity is to avoid it or ignore it. I know it's not easy sometimes. I know it hurts you. But thinking of those who are giving those negative comments, I really pray for them because probably they couldn't achieve what they wanted to. And when they see you growing and thriving in life, it creates more negativity and bitterness in them. That's why I say pray for those who see their failure in your success. It takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of energy to hate someone. And those who hate people are already living a miserable life. So, you know, we all should pray for them and should move on. It's a huge responsibility. Titles like she's inspirational or she's the Iron Lady. Sometimes these titles weigh you down. You know, I always say that just because whatever I'm left with, if I'm managing to carry it with grace, does not mean it's not heavy. It is heavy. You know, life happens every day. There are so many highs and as many lows, and sometimes we are not our 110%. But also, when people look at me and they call me an inspiration, it's really, really overwhelming. It's also humbling, and I really feel blessed. But at the same time, it's really scary. The best way to stay positive and to be contented is the attitude of gratitude. That's the key. You know, I read this beautiful quote somewhere which says that I've never seen a bitter person who is grateful and a grateful person who is bitter. So be grateful. I know there are times when you don't feel like being grateful. There are times when you want to question why, where, when, how. But there is always, always something to be grateful for. You know, I have lost so much in life. But what I have gained so far is way beyond what I have lost. So every time when I think of what I have, I'm more grateful, I'm more contented, and I'm more happy. So if you really want to be happy and if you want to live a fulfilled life, make sure that your heart is full of gratitude. I remember those remarks. Those remarks have left scars on my soul and it's really hard to heal them. So those remarks had two different extremes. The first extreme was I heard people saying, oh, she's too pretty to be in the wheelchair. And the other extreme was, oh, she must have done something wrong. And that's her punishment. That's why she ended up in the wheelchair for the rest of her life. You know, and those were really painful remarks. Even now when people ask me that when we look at someone who is differently abled, what should we say? How are we supposed to talk to them? And I always tell them, why is it important to say something all the time? Can we just don't stare at them? Can we just look at them and smile and move on? I think that's the best way to do it. Let's practice silence more. Because when we speak, we probably don't, don't think. And I have made peace with the fact that most of the people don't think before they speak. So yes, those remarks were hurtful. They still are. But in the last 12 years, I've learned to be more patient and more forgiving. Betrayal itself is very painful. And when people hide their betrayal, that hurts even more. But if you have experienced betrayal in life, we all have. All I would like to say is that look at yourself in the mirror and tell yourself that you certainly deserve better. So just straighten your crown and